Hi everyone. What was your biggest fear when you were learning to drive? Or are you still learning to drive and what's your biggest fear? We're going to look at one scenario today that I think is pretty high on that list. So the situation we're going to look at today is quite simply moving off and what I mean about moving off is when you're moving off and there are people behind you. I tend to find that my learners are probably more stressed about this situation than most other things. We're not just talking about moving off from the side of the road. You generally move off when there's no one coming whatsoever. But it's situations maybe like this in front where we've got to emerge out of a T-junction when it's busy side to side. And it's these situations maybe when you've got people behind that you might feel that little bit of extra pressure and you'll mess up. But what other situations is moving off stressful? Well. This can be pretty stressful as well when we're doing a right turn at a set of traffic lights. It could be even that you're pressured just moving off when you're just going ahead at a set of lights if you've got someone really, really close behind. But this scenario of crossing traffic is often a little bit more pressurized. You know that you've got to get it right. Therefore, that's usually when it's going to fall to bits. Even with the lights changing, sometimes people may feel as though they've got to rush and clear because they know the traffic from the side is going to start moving. The classic time for me though, where I feel most people get stressed moving off, is when they're trying to emerge, not necessarily at a T-junction or a crossroad, but a roundabout. Things happen and change really fast when you're trying to emerge onto roundabouts. And this is where people tend to rush. And what happens when they rush? Well, go into this now. A few things can happen when people are put under pressure and it usually involves them stalling the car. The three reasons why people stall the car are these. First of all, it could be selecting the incorrect gear. Instead of going for first, they rush, they panic, and maybe choose third, or even forget that they were approaching perhaps in fourth gear, and then because the lights change in front of them and there's people behind, they think they've got to get out of there, and then they forget about the gear altogether. So that can be the first stage of rushing and it causing the stall. The other two reasons why people stall are to do with your feet. I always go on about on all my videos and all my lessons that people should not be starting off with their foot and a foot brake and using the clutch when you find a bike then going across towards the accelerator or gas that shouldn't be the case and that's another reason why people stall but that's digressing slightly however it can actually make the situation worse if you feel under pressure. Um, and the main reason is because there's a lack of gas, a lack of power. Your car needs power to move off. And when your foot's on the foot brake and you find a bite, your car is not got enough power to actually move it away. I'm gonna try and explain how this works just quickly. I'm gonna turn the car on. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna um, sit with my foot on the foot brake, press the clutch down. I'm gonna stick it into the correct first gear. What I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna keep my foot on the foot brake and find the bite. And what you'll see is the rev counter here on the right hand side, it's sitting at idle and it's just below 1000 revs. As I lift and find the bite, what actually happens is that you can hear it, it's struggling now. Because if you think about it, your car's lowest speed that it wants to work at is idle speed. If I find a bite, there's a load on that engine. The engine's trying to pull the car away or it's trying to work. Therefore, your engine revs drop. So it's this lack of gas 
which often causes the stall. You don't have enough time if your foot is on the foot brake to apply enough gas to stop the car stalling. So the lack of gas can be a big deal. What people are scared of generally when they're learning to drive is the sound. They're worried about that sound of the engine, but you need to give it a little bit. You need to have enough power so you can hear it positively before you then move off. So the lack of gas is the second reason why people are gonna stall. The final one is simply using the clutch too quickly. People think you have to continue to lift the clutch as you continue to move and that's not the case. If you lift the clutch up to the biting point, you will only need to lift it a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit to actually get the car off and moving and you leave that clutch probably just around the bite, maybe a little bit above the bite for approximately a car length whilst you're moving away and then you lift it up and you can actually hear when the clutch plates actually match speed when you can lift this clutch all the way up. It's difficult to hear on the audio on the camera but I'm just going to quickly demonstrate. I'm just going to have to wait for this guy to move off. There's a few kids around as well. I'm going to let him go. Okay, so I might have to tweak the audio after recording um, in, in editing for you to be able to hear this, but I'm, I'm gonna try and um, demonstrate this as much as I can. So as you use your gas to move off, you then lift the clutch to the bite and you'll hear the engine revs change. Now, lift and it is after about a car length. So using the clutch too quickly is also gonna cause you to stall. To have these three things all in place as you're moving off is obviously really, really important. But what can we do to actually make sure that this happens? The thing that often goes wrong is my number one thing. It's probably one of the words I use all the time, planning and the lack of planning causes people to rush, causes people to panic, and then your feet coordination go wrong, and that's when you're gonna stall, and that's when you think that these people behind are gonna be giving you all kinds of grief because you're a learner and because you have stalled. Now that's not generally the case. I would probably say 90%, even more than that, of people on the road appreciate the problems that learners do have when they are learning to drive and they're okay a lot of the time people don't care behind that you've stalled they'll just wait for you but there are a reasonable percentage of people who are going to be on the horn going to be waving their hands going to be cursing you and it's these people who have probably made this feeling in your head about these people behind and i've got to rush away get worse and worse and worse so what do I mean by planning? Rather than reacting, what we should be trying to do is to think of things in advance. The first thing is looking far. I need to look not here in front of my vehicle, I need to look as far around the corner as I possibly can. And even now I'm going to do an emerge. I'm not waiting till I get to the end of the road before I start looking. I'm looking now as I approach. And it's this not being reactive and planning which makes things loads easier and allows you time to get prepared so you can flow so rather than looking at that piece of tarmac in front of the car my advice would be to try and get at least six to eight seconds ahead so try and anticipate what's going to be happening in that time scale and you can do this by asking yourself the simple question, what if? Anticipation of traffic lights is also an area that people are lacking, I find, when they're learning to drive and even full license holders. When you're sat here, you should have an understanding how the traffic light sensors work and understand the flow of traffic and these finishing, the bus actually doing its right turn and the black one behind should mean that we will be able to go shortly and we can and it's that lack of thought 
and just being reactive, which again, just causes people to rush and then the stall happens and then you get that inbuilt fear of these people behind you. So the lack of planning that people often show, then their gap arrives and they can go and that makes people rush even more because they feel compelled, they feel as though they will just be holding people up. So there's one extra little bit of skill that I'd like to just put across to try and actually help people cope with this. And it's creeping a little bit before the gap comes. I'm going to try and show you what I mean as I do this T-junction up onto the dual carriageway. Now there is a car coming and there's a gap after it. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to start working my feet very slowly before the car gets here so I'm ready to flow into the space. And that's a much better way of doing things rather than waiting till your space arrives and then trying to react quickly and that's when the rush happens and that's when you stall and that's again when it snowballs with your thoughts with these people behind. We can apply the same way of thinking in all scenarios. Say if I was doing a right turn, the oncoming cars, plan them early, know which is the last one you're waiting for, and start a little bit of creeping just before your gap arrives so you're ready to flow into it. And we can do exactly the same with roundabouts if our planning's good enough but again we cannot plan if we're only looking one or two seconds in front of us so already i'm looking onto the roundabout and i'm trying to see the final car i've already picked up on the positions they could be coming round and now i'm starting to move into my space just to make sure i flow as much as i can it is easier to do roundabouts and to flow into spaces if you look earlier from actually more than a stop. If you stop all the time, it's then more difficult to get going. I'm not sure whether any of you have ever had to push a broken down car. If you have, it's quite difficult to actually get started, but once you get the car going, it's a lot, lot easier job to actually keep it going. And this is the same sort of way of thinking that I'm trying to actually help people with with the moving off your engines got less work to do if you move off if you like from a walking pace or a trotting pace rather than a dead stop so always do your utmost to try and keep moving and try and keep rolling So I'm slowing down more for the white one and I'm planning my gap to move after. My feet are working before the white one's even past me. I don't want to rush that stage too much because if I do start zooming out, that white one may have thought that I was going to pull out in front of it, which I wasn't. So let's have a look to see what I can do with these traffic lights up ahead. There's no point legging it to get there. If I take my time, more than likely by the time I get there, these lights are going to be changed and I'll just keep flowing. There's no point rushing to go and queue because of the lack of traffic coming out from the road on the right. Even more likelihood of these going in the colour and in the direction that I want to go. There you go. Use the sound, have power and feed the power in as quickly as I like. Now get going. There you go. Don't be worried about making progress and accelerating quickly, or as quickly as that guy, but there's no problem about actually accelerating quick and keeping up with the flow. Again, take my time. I'm gonna do my utmost to keep moving, and away we go. I hope that's been a help to a few people and not just people learning to drive. There may very well be a few of those things that people who are full license holders maybe do and knowing this information now may very well 
be able to allow you just to lower that level and lower that stress when you're out there. I hope everyone's taking care and keeping safe. I hope to see everyone soon as well. Thanks for watching.